Chapter 46 The moon began to fade as the brightening sky revealed itself through it. The sun was awakening, and Minley wanted to return home as soon as possible. Dragon, having waited three days and nights, was well rested, so they decided to leave Never Ending Mountain at once. As Dragon soared through the sky, any heaviness inside Minley left. He seemed to dance in the air, and his happiness made her feel as light as the clouds around her. The sun seemed to warm her heart, and joy bubbled inside of her. She knew she had asked the right question. Before they left, Minley and the dragon circled over the village of the moon rain. Da, Fu, Ama, Agong, and the villagers saw them and ran out of their stone hut, flapping their ruined squeak sleeves in greeting. Don't stop, Ama shouted with a broad smile. Go home. Minley nodded and waved goodbye until the flowering trees looked like brush strokes of golden paint on the mountain. Flying on the dragon made traveling much faster. It seemed as if in no time they were above the city of bright moonlight. From the sky, the inner city, and the outer city, grids looked like a giant labyrinth, and the two stone guardians looked as if they were dog trinkets molded from clay. Minley saw the roof of the buffalo boy's broken down hut, but no glimpse of him. He's probably inside sleeping, Minley thought, wondering if the goddess of, we of weaving had visited the previous night. But as they passed the bay of water by the city, Minley saw something strange, like an orange shadow streaking across the sky. Dragon saw it too and slowed down. As it got closer, there was no mistaking it. It was another dragon. The dragon was orange, the color of the inside of a ripe mango. When she saw Minley the dragon, a coquettish smile spread across her face. Hello, dragon breathed in an odd voice. Minley looked at him in surprise, but the orange dragon kept flying without saying a word. As she passed, she winked at them. Dragon balanced in midair as if stunned. He watched the orange dragon sweep down and away to the water below until she was a ginger, ginger speck in the distance. Are you okay? Minley asked the dragon as he continued to stare. You must be excited that you've finally seen another dragon. I am, Dragon said, as if in a daze. Then he shook himself as if trying to rouse himself awake. But I will find her again later. I will bring you home first. Millie shrugged. Dragon was acting oddly, but there was something familiar about that orange dragon. Perhaps the way her scales reflected in the sun, like fish scales glistening in the water. And those knowledgeable eyes, nodding as if she knew her. Millie smiled. Hours passed and the land below them blurred. Millie slept on and off. The smooth ride of the flying dragon made it easy for her to sleep. Millie was impressed by how far they had journeyed and how much faster they were able to travel by flying. The sun was only beginning to go down past the horizon when they saw the edge of the peach forest. The tops of the peach trees seemed to sway and welcome to them as they flew overhead. And as they continued to fly, Millie thought she saw the monkeys still attached by the fishnet around the pot of rice. But Dragon was still acting strangely. When Fruitless Mountain, with his familiar black peak cutting into the pink and orange sky sun, sunset sky, came into view, the dragon almost stopped flying. What mountain is that? he asked Minley. It's Fruitless Mountain, Minley told him. Right beyond it, next to the Jade River, is my home. Fruitless Mountain, he said to himself. And even though he continued to fly, he seemed to be in a daze. Minley wondered if flying had somehow made him lightheaded but her attention could not be kept by her concern for him. Night was falling in the dark lines of Fruitless Mountain, softened in the shadowy sky. But Minley could still see that <clears throat> every moment brought them closer to the Jade River and Fruitless Mountain closer. She was almost home. However, when they reached Fruitless Mountain, Dragon suddenly stopped. He dropped lightly to the base of Fruitless Mountain, where so long ago Minley had taken some stone to make her compass. This is Fruitless Mountain, Dragon said, and again Minley looked at him. He was definitely acting out of the ordinary. Yes, Minley said, a bit puzzled. My village is just a bit past this. I can walk from here if you wish. Do you mind? Dragon asked. For some reason, I feel as, as if I do not want to leave here. No, I don't mind, Minley say, said. Are you okay? The dragon looked at her and smiled. Yes, dragon said. Strangely, I feel like I am home. 
Millie wrinkled her forehead in confusion, but was too eager to get home to her parents to ask any more questions. Minley hugged Dragon goodbye. He returned her hug warmly, but she could tell he was distracted. She held out the round ball she had taken from Dragon's head. Do you want this? No, Dragon glanced at it absentmindedly. You can have it. Minley shrugged again, but the urge to go home began to pull at her strongly. She waved goodbye to Dragon and began to run toward the village. It was late night when she finally reached home. The slumbering village was silent. And as Minley crept into her home, the pale goldfish greeted her. Shh, the goldfish said to her. Your parents are sleeping. Welcome home. Minley was a little surprised to see a goldfish, but smiled at greeting. Moonlight misted over the rough floors and made the sparse room glow silver. The goldfish bow looking like a second moon. The shabby walls and worn stones seemed to shimmer as if a translucent silk veil covered them. Muting any flaws and transforming the house into a dwelling of luminous light and delicate shadows. Minley had never seen her home look so beautiful. Tiptoeing, she put her bag and the dragon stone on the table and went into her room. Smiling, she climbed into her bed and went to sleep. Chapter 47 Minley? Minley! Ma and Ba's happiness burst from them like exploding firecrackers, and even before she could open her eyes, they had flung themselves upon her. The joy! How it flowed and flooded over her, more golden than the king's dragon bracelet, sweeter than a peach from the queen's mother's garden, and more beautiful than a goddess of heaven. Minley smiled, treasuring her good fortune. Ma and Ba only stopped hugging her when her stomach began to grumble with hunger. Ma rushed to make a special breakfast, taking out the carefully saved dried pork to make Minley's favorite porridge, while Ba jumped to get some fresh water to make tea. When, but when Ba went into the main room, he made a choking noise that caused Minley and Ma to come running. What is that? He said, pointing. Minley followed his finger and saw him pointing at her traveling possessions on the table. The swim, swim swam merrily around in his bowl as the silk of her brocade bag made the sunlight skip around the room. That is a bag given to, given to me by the king of the city of bright moonlight, Minley said. It is very fine, isn't it? Not that, Ba said, waving the bag away. That! And now Minley saw that he was pointing to Dragon Stone Ball. It's just a gift from a friend, Minley said, handing it to her father. Ba took it in his hands reverently, a look of awe on his face. This is not just any gift, Ba whispered, and he took his sleeve and gently rubbed the surface of the stone. To <clears throat> Minley's great surprise, the grayness of the stone began to smudge away and a translucent, lustrous glow seemed to shine through. This is a dragon's pearl. Ma, Minley and Ma stared. A dragon's pearl, Ma said slowly. She sat down and looked at Minley. A dragon's pearl is worth the emperor's entire fortune. Minley opened her mouth, but before any words could come out, there was a great shouting and clamoring outside on the street. Ba quickly but carefully put the dragon pearl back on the table before they all hurried out to see what the uproar was about. What is it? Ma asked, grabbing a neighbor. The entire village had flowed into the street, talking and shouting like a flock of birds discovering a feast. What is happening? It's Fruitless Mountain, the neighbor said. Fruitless Mountain has turned green. What? Ba said. It's true, it's true, another neighbor chimed in. Fruitless Mountain is no longer fruitless. And the Jade River is clear and fresh too. Ma, Minley, Ma, and Ba looked at the mountain. It was true. Fruitless Mountain was no longer a black shadow above them. As the day dawned, the mountain had transformed. A green lushness seemed to bloom from the rock. A jewel-colored splendor softened the sharp edges that had painfully sliced the sky. The sky itself seemed to be embracing the mountain. The wind softly caressed the newborn greenery with the nurturing breeze and skimmed the Jade River, the water now as clear as tears of joy. How is this possible, Ma asked. Jade Dragon must be happy again, Ba said. Perhaps she is reunited with one of her dragon children. Dragon, Millie thought, and her quick-thinking mind began to spin. 
Dragon said he was making his home on Fruitless Mountain. Could he be one of Jade Dragon's children? But how? Dragon was born from a painting, from paintbrushes and inkstones. And like an echo, Millie remembered Ma talking about the artist who had come to Fruitless Mountain many years ago. He took the mountain rock to carve into inking stones. Perhaps Dragon was born from an inkstone made of Fruitless Mountain, the heart of Jade Dragon. Then perhaps he was one of Jade Dragon's children. And by bringing him to Fruitless Mountain, Minley had discovered how to make Fruitless Mountain green again. Minley, a villager, finally recovered from the shock of the Green Mountain, stared at Minley. You came back. Look, everyone, Minley has returned. As the neighbors clamored around, Ma sighed, but it was a sigh of joy, a sound of happiness that floated like a butterfly in the sky in the air. Good fortune has come to the village, Ma said, smiling, and to us as well. Yes, Ba said, looking affectionately at Minley, but the best fortune is the one that returned. Minley smiled back, and suddenly, as she thought about her journey to and from Never Ending Mountain, Minley realized that while she had not asked the old man of the moon any of her questions, they had all been answered. Chapter 48 The goldfish man shaded his eyes as he pushed his cart along Jade River. Yes, he was almost there. How long had it been? Two years? Perhaps three? Yes, the poor village of Fruitless Mountain should be ahead soon, he thought. But possibly he was mistaken. When he had been there last, the most striking characteristic of the landscape had been the Black Mountain, its shadow casting gloom upon the village. But there was no dark silhouette in the sky now. In fact, the landscape looked as if it were from a heavenly painting. A majestic green mountain sat in harmony with the deepening blue sky, the sun spreading its light for the last time before it set. Had he taken a wrong turn somewhere? As he gazed, two flying figures in the sky caught his eye, red and orange, a dragon and his mate frolicking amongst the clouds. Wait, dragons? The goldfish man shook his head in disbelief, rubbed his eyes, and looked again. Only the dimming sky and feathery clouds fanning the wind were above. I must have been imagining things, he thought. The goldfish man pushed forward onward. The water in the fish bowls rippled and waved as the fish gazed calmly. Their brilliant colors against the abundant green land glinted like gold and jade. As he entered the village, the goldfish man again began to doubt if he was in the right place. Smooth stone lined the roadway, and instead of the rough board houses, he remembered rich wooden doors, some elaborately carved, lined the street. As he pushed his cart down the narrow street, lively children dressed in gay colors flew toward him like a festival of silk kites. Goldfish, goldfish, they cried. Ma, ba, can we get one? Parents walked over and smiled indulgently at their children. And by the time the sun disappeared, the goldfish man had sold out of his wares. Clearly, this was not the same poor village he had come to before, where only that one girl had purchased a fish. But then he remembered hearing a story about how a family that lived by the Jade River had given the king of the city of bright moonlight the incredible gift of a dragon pearl, refusing any payment. In gratitude, the king presented the entire village with gifts of seeds and farming equipment that brought them more prosperity than any reward of gold and jade. Maybe this was the place. Little one, the goldfish man asked, a young girl dressed in a peony pink silk jacket and leaf green pantaloons. The last time I was here, the last time I came to the village of Fruitless Mountain, a child ran away from home. What happened to her? Ran away from here? The girl looked at him in disbelief, as if the idea was foreign. Then she nodded. Oh, you must mean Minley. That's when this, this used to be called the... Village of Fruitless Mountain. Now it's called the Village of Fruit, Fruit Mountain. Yes, Minley, the goldfish man said. I think that was her name. What happened to her? She and her family live over there. The girl waved her arm. They built a courtyard in front and back of their house. 
is behind the gate with the pictures of the lucky children on the door. The goldfish man wheeled his empty cart to the indicated gate. On each half of the crimson doors hung a painting of a round-faced laughing child dressed in brilliant red. Their pink cheeks and merry smiles made it impossible not to smile back. And as he grasped one of the metal door knockers shaped like a grinning lion head, he realized that the painting on the left was of a girl and the one on the right was of a boy. The door flew open as soon as he knocked and the goldfish man was face to face with a woman he scarcely recognized. He recognized her even less when she threw her arm around him like an old friend. Yes, you, she said to him, her face wrinkling in cheerful smiles. Come in, come in. My husband will be happy to see you. The goldfish man, speechless with surprise, let himself be led through the gate doors. Was this the mother with angry eyes he had met in the woods long ago? Yes, this pleasant-faced woman, her plum-colored coat embroidered with flowering trees, was the same person. He shook his head in disbelief. As he glanced upward, he realized the courtyard was like a well for the sky. The stars and the night seemed to flow into it endlessly. Was the courtyard built for just that purpose, he wondered. Light from the house streamed through the lattice-patterned door, illuminating the enclosure like a lit lantern. There, the father was surrounded by visiting children, whom the goldfish man recognized as his earlier customers. Some of the children were playing on the ground with clay toys of boys, buffaloes, monkeys, and rabbits, while others were being served tea by the father. The tea is a gift from our faraway friends, the father was saying as he handed a child a cup. They call it Dragon Well. Husband, the woman called. Husband, look who is here. As he caught sight of the goldfish man, the father stopped in mid-sentence. And his face broke into a wild, wide smile. Ah, he cried, dear friend. And like the mother, before letting him bow politely, the father embraced him warmly. Come, the father said, have some tea. My wife will bring out some cakes and snacks. The goldfish man finally found his voice. I am glad to see you and your wife so happy and prosperous, he said. I only stopped to see if, last time we met, how is your daughter? Minley, the father said, laughing and waving his hand toward the house. She is in the back. She will be happy to see you too, but she will come out later. This is the time of night she likes to watch the moon. She returned then, the goldfish man asked. I thought she would. What happened? Ah, my friend, Bob laughed again. You have come at the right time. Why do you think these children are here? They come here every night because they want to hear the story again. The story of Minley's journey to and from Never Ending Mountain. Come, sit. You can hear it for the first time. The goldfish man sat down willingly on a stone seat and found a fragrant cup of tea in his hand. The children clamored around Ba, each more excited than the last and eager for the story to begin. But as Ma went inside the house to get refreshments, she left the door wide open and the goldfish man could not help peering in. He could see all the way through the house to the back courtyard where the figure of a young girl sat on a bench, a small pond of fish at her feet. The moonlight washed over everything like a rich bath of gold and silver, making the fish shimmer like pearls and the girl glow with a magical glory reserved for the stars of heaven. But Minley was obviously unaware of all around her, lost in faraway dreams. For even in the misty light, the goldfish man could see her smiling a secret smile up to the sky to where the mountain meets the moon. And that, my friends, is the end of the story of where the mountain meets the moon. And again, let's look. Here is the mountain. Here is the mountain at the beginning. Remember the story of the fruitless mountain? And then here is the mountain at the end. And we have followed Minley on her journey to where the mountain meets the moon. I hope you enjoyed it, boys and girls.